Veterinarians of Reddit, what's a clear sign that someone is a good parent to their pet? I'll never forget, as an assistant, a big biker dude, tats, glasses, beard, sour expression, the whole thing. Kneeling down beside his cat who was getting his temperature checked, cupping its head in his hands and whispering, Oh baby, I know. Oh my little flower petal, I wouldn't like that too. Don't cry, it will be over soon, and I absolutely melted for him. Dude was scary to look at before that but after that I saw a whole different kind of person. You met Hagrid my dude. It's like the only good moment in the Twilight movie. Mind reader is looking around a restaurant and saying what people are thinking about. At the end he gets to a biker guy covered in tattoos. Sex, money, sex, money, biker guy, dot cat. I'll never forget when a vet complimented my pet parenting abilities. I have a very anxious cat, who obviously hated going to the vet. He would meow and hiss and tensed up whenever they touched him. I'm sure he wasn't the meanest cat they'd ever dealt with, but he was clearly scared and unhappy. I don't think I did anything special that day, I just stood with him, petting him as they checked his temperature and gave him shots. I scratched his head and pet his back. Normal cat owner things. While doing the checkup, the vet turns to me and so casually says. You're so good with him, he trusts you so much. This was over five years ago and it still makes my heart warm. I adopted a senior dog who is 70 pounds and think he is a lap dog. Loves cuddling and is the most affectionate dog I've ever been around. He hates the vet and will try to snap at them. We have to give him trazodone before a vet visit and muzzle him too but he trusts me and the vet told me she could tell how much he loves and trusts me and how good I am with him. I feel bad for both the dog and vet because it's stressful for both. I 30 y o never have owned a cat until this last year. He was a rescue and was very scared of certain things like cars, other animals. I don't know a lot of things about how to raise a cat so I'm sure I do a lot of things wrong. I was told I carried my cat wrong, I cradle him like a baby with his belly up. That being said I took him to the vet and he wasn't a fan and acting a bit crazy worse than I had ever seen him behave before. I asked if I could hold him while the vet worked and I put him in cradle position in my arms and he was perfect. The vet was a little shocked, but I thought it was normal. My cat is super scared of dogs and cars driving by, but when he is in cradle position he will let a dog come up and smell him and he won't even tense up. Same with getting in a car or carrying him to get the mail. If he is in cradle position super calm any other hold he would scatch me up if he saw a dog or cat go by. Same with giving him showers semi hates water but if he is in cradle position I can wash and clean him and he barely moves. I just wish I could put him on a leash and let him walk, but he gets too scared always wants to be cradled while walking the neighborhood. Being a responsible owner is completely relative to each situation. Yes, make your preventative care appointments on time and follow all vaccine, diet, annual recommendations. But also how you treat your pet and your vet in less routine checkups and sick visits says a lot. People can have all the money in the world and be terrible owners. On the other hand, the way people behave and make decisions in the face of financial limitations is also really telling. Owners that are willing to listen to me and make reasonable and informed decisions in the interest of their pet, even if we can't reach a gold standard plan, are good pet parents. You don't have to be a millionaire to be a good pet parent. Be nice to your vet and know that the health and well-being of your little buddy is always top priority. Fair point. When my dog had his first big seizure I chose to take him to the emergency vet rather than eat for that week, went to food shelter. It was a 15 minute long seizure and I knew from having epilepsy myself that 15 minutes is bad. I would rather starve than not have my boy cared for. I've family that's twice sent their cats through very invasive and amp, expensive surgery and amp, pills when they got cancer approximately 14 years old. They did all that because they couldn't say, goodbye. After the first one they realized that the cat didn't seem itself, it was just drugged up and had a heartbeat. They got another year with it, then it died. 
Then they cared for their second cat in the exact same way as if they forgot they wish they hadn't for the first one. Not a vet but an owner with a story. We adopted Hobbs about seven years ago after finding him in our neighborhood. He was very friendly, purred like a chainsaw and was malnourished. We took him in and he became the best darn house cat ever, cuddly and sweet, got along great with our other cats. Just a big lovable goof. About five years ago I felt a lump near the base of his tail. We took him in to get it scanned and the vet described it as an iceberg tumor, what we felt was just the tip of a large mass intertwined throughout his hindquarters. We were devastated. I had several visits and calls with the vet to understand our options. Due to the size and location of the tumor, it was completely inoperable. Radiation and chemo are available but would require travel for Hobbs he gets carsick very easily and would make him miserable and sick and wouldn't have any guarantees of success. The vet assured us that he was in no pain and that it didn't seem to be having any effect on his mobility or anything. I finally asked, what if we don't do anything? What if we just treat him like normal, let it run its course and let him be happy? The vet paused and said, that's what I'd do if he was my cat. He assured me he thought we were taking good care of him. The tumor has gotten bigger but I'm happy to say Hobbs is still with us. He's got a small bit of a limp these days but he loves everyone he's ever met and acts like a dog, following us around and wanting tummy rubs. I know at some point the tumor will take him but until it does we're going to give him the best home we can. Hobbs sounds like he was very loved. In my uneducated opinion, let the animal be if they're not in pain. If they're in pain, put them to rest, but otherwise just let them chill at home. My heart hurts just reading this. He has had a tough life but I am so glad he has met you. Bless you for being his voice and loving him so much. Not a vet but my vet mentioned once that he can tell by the condition of their coat. He said that my dog was well loved, cared for and petted often due to the smooth coat. Miss that doggy so much. Was thinking you meant the owner's coat. I'm like, I've got a padded jacket, what's that mean? I should get some sleep now. Wait, so non-care dogs have hard coat like a bear? The biggest thing is really do you think of things from your pet's point of view? I don't care if you look up things on the internet and ask about them. You should. There are lots of different ways for pets to die, be euthanized and we do recommend a hospice idea that makes their end as comfortable as possible and that a lot depends on the pet and you and the pet's condition. Maybe they'd like to be outside, for example. But if people think from their pet's point of view, and if they spend a lot of time with them, it's a good sign. For example, if someone asks, will my puppy get bored in their crate all day while I'm at work? Yes. I feel a lot better about them than if they say, he peed in his crate again. Without thinking, maybe he couldn't wait that long. If people go on walks with them, describe activities they like, have games with them, just enjoy each other, that's a sign there is a real relationship there, and not just some random being lurking around your house that you're not paying attention to. I don't mind if you treat your dog like a person. I don't even know what that means. Should you respect them? Yes. Think about their happiness, which you are solely responsible for. Yes. If you have in your mind that your pet, like you, gets bored, needs exercise, needs attention, likes to have fun, doesn't like feeling itchy or sick or lonely, and you are attentive to those things and getting help when necessary, that's all good. Great perspective. I get the feeling that some people, people who don't have dogs, think I'm being overly dramatic or doting just for caring about my dog and his happiness a lot. Like you said, as a pet owner, you are fully and 100% responsible for their health and happiness. It's a huge responsibility. You should take it seriously and you should care a lot about your pet's comfort and feelings. I am so in tune with my dog I can always tell his mood and happiness and what he needs through his body language. People who don't have pets, or don't properly care for their pets, don't understand how important that is. You can't communicate with them much verbally so you kind of work out your own language and rhythm. It's like the best part of being a dog owner. 
Making my dog happy makes me so happy, and having such a good-natured, sweet companion that knows my every move before I make it is awesome. On the flip side, a person is generally a bad pet owner if, when frightened in the vet office, their pet goes to a staff member for comfort and reassurance instead of to their owner. Interesting, I didn't know animals did this too. Saw this a lot with parents and their kids. I've got a rescue named Bella. She is so loved but if she gets outside off leash, she bolts. She will literally run up to anyone else and jump on them and be so excited. But when she sees me or my S.O. or the kids trying to get her back she runs and runs and runs. In the back of my mind I always hope no one thinks we're bad pet owners. They don't know Bella like we do smiley face. S.R.Y. a little off topic. Not a vet but a vet tech. Maybe a controversial one, but being ready to let go when the time comes. We see it all the time, pet parents who are too scared to say goodbye and keep paying for expensive treatments which can make a pet live longer, but doesn't improve their quality of life. I'm 100% behind putting up a fight and doing anything you can to save a pet's life, but living in pain is very hard and a lot to ask of an animal who can't accurately describe their pain to you. If there's one thing I've learned it's that some people love by hanging on, and others love by letting go. It's hard, but it's usually the right thing to do. I cried reading this. I just put down my beautiful girl a month ago. After 13 years together. We shared many joys and many traumas. She was my very best friend. I worked in animal hospitals since I was 18, I'm a vet assistant and I have seen what forcing to extend a life to your pet can do. It's not fair, to the pet or you. I felt conflicted. Like I did the right thing, but I didn't try hard enough. The, what if I did this too, or did this? When truth is, I know better. From experience, education and observation that this was it. I couldn't let my girl suffer anymore. I watched her open her eyes for the last time, and close them permanently. It was the hardest thing I had to do and I miss her every day. Thank you for reminding me that I loved her enough to let go. I'd have to agree. Putting their needs over your own in times of extreme illness, pain is the best gift you could ever give them. Of course you love them and don't want to lose them. That doesn't mean you have the right to prolong their suffering. This is something my mom has done and I have a hard time getting past it. Also, thank you for the hard work you do. On the flip side, I'd like to talk about an amazing vet. Among many other things, she went in on her day off to treat my chinchilla when he was in pain and couldn't eat solid food. I will never go to another vet as long as she is practicing. My aunt is friends with the vet my whole family takes our pets to. When my aunt had to put down her chihuahua, the vet came in on a Sunday, a day they are normally closed, to do the euthanasia. She let my whole family wait in the waiting room while my aunt and uncle said their goodbyes and she let them have alone time with him before and after. The vet was also crying with them. She is the most compassionate vet I've ever met. My old vet had always been very eager to compliment my dad's pet parenting, and when my dad switched to a new vet, it was a shock to him to be completely told off. His puppy was about 25 pounds overweight French Bulldog, so this was a huge issue, and the vet had to threaten him with animal control to get him to finally realize that yes, overfeeding your animal, especially junk food, is still abuse. They just love you for it. She's now at the appropriate weight and this get keeps him in line regarding some of his spoiling habits. Small animal veterinarian here. A willingness to listen to, and gasp maybe even follow, the recommendations I make for care, especially for routine things like vaccines, individualized dietary needs, or preventative health. I can tell when owners think they know more than I do and don't bother trying to inform and educate some who are stuck in their ways e.g. That feeding raw meat is superior to cooked, that vaccines do more harm than good, or that dogsnaturally.com is a reputable source of information. I love when my owners want to talk about health matters, if you have an open mind, I am a wealth of information. Putting in the effort at home to care for your pet. Dogs and cats are not house ornaments. 
Both require socialization, interaction, some grooming, and attention. Not every pet is happy to come to see me, and I understand that, but if you don't pay attention to whether or not your pet is eating, or even what they are eating, never know what their stool looks like, and don't know what medications they are on, it makes my job a lot harder. Knowing these answers to the questions I ask shows you care. Being willing to actually come see me and put in some effort when your pet is sick. Look, I'm sorry, guys. Medical care costs money. Treating your pet for free takes money away from the hospital and the people who work there. Veterinarians aren't rich, and most clinics operate on thin margins. That being said, I will do everything I can to help within your individual limits, even if it's not the best approach medically. Yes, sometimes that means in the worst cases, euthanasia for a problem that is too costly to fix but would cause nothing but pain suffering if left untreated. I understand we all have limits, and you can be a great caregiver without endless disposable income. But if you expect me to magically fix your ailing pet with no exam, no diagnostics, and get angry that we have to charge for these things to keep our doors open, you lose sympathy in my eyes. In short, look after your pet's health, put in the effort to care for them, and try to listen to your doctor. One additional edit. If a pet is at a healthy weight. Granted, that is not a guarantee that a pet has a great owner, nor is an owner of an overweight pet necessarily bad, but an ideal weight usually means that the owner is willing to put in the effort to keep a pet healthy. And GT, but if you expect me to magically fix your ailing underscore with no exam, no diagnostics, and get angry that we have to charge for these things to keep our doors open, you lose sympathy in my eyes. Nods knowingly in mechanic. All of this. Clients willing to listen to the doctor and understanding we have your pet's best interest in mind. If we wanted to get rich, we wouldn't be doing clinical medicine. A true pet parent knows when it is time to say goodbye. I have seen horrors beyond horrors where animals have been denied a peaceful death, sadly this was more common than not. I've seen animals in constant seizures brought in just to pass away at the threshold of the practice. I've seen animals whose muscles were so atrophied and dehydrated that they looked like mummies. Inoperable painful tumors, blind, deaf, paralyzed in combination. I totally get it, it is the most heartbreaking thing that a family can go through. But making that decision for them when they can't, letting them go so before their suffering escalates, is compassion. It doesn't feel like it, but animals live very much, in the moment, and we assume have no concept of how long their suffering will go on. As I said many times when I practiced, better a week early than a day too late. Euthanasia means, good death. One of the most loving owners I ever met had a poodle cross with an aggressive cancer. She took her for chemotherapy and radiation at a referral center despite really struggling for the funds, because she wanted to do everything for her friend. However she was an incredibly thoughtful lady, she saw that her pup was behaving differently and spent more of her days nauseous and lethargic, although she could still go for good walks. She took her little lady for the most glorious run on the beach, I saw the photos, sun shining, ears blowing in the wind, on her last day. She didn't want to let her get to a point where that was impossible for her because of the pain. We knew that this pup would have a week or two, tops, as she wasn't responding well to the chemo. So we euthanized her that day, sand still on her fur, munching on burgers and with tail wagging until the very end. It was soul-rending but oddly beautiful. And the owner said that she's never felt such pain, but that we make these decisions for their sake, not ours. I've been in similar situations myself and to make the call when the thought of it is agony, that is a true pet parent. Obligatory, not a vet, but I used to work with a guy who used to ring his dad at 9 a.m. every morning. It was always a one-minute conversation, hi dad, you okay? I'll ring you for a proper chat later. I asked him why he rang in the morning if he was going to ring in the evening anyway. He said that his dad was quite old, in his late 80s at the time, and had a dog, which he doted on, and so he made his son promise to ring him every morning to check that he hadn't died in the night. He was worried the dog would need a wee and some food and if he died he wanted to be sure that someone would come round and let the dog out and feed it. 
not a vet, but ours has complimented us many times on the way our dogs respond to being touched. From very early on, we wanted our dogs to be comfortable having their ears clean, teeth brushed, nails trimmed, being checked for ticks, groomed, etc. So we went through a nightly ritual of doing all these things, even if not needed, and as a result, our dogs are very easy going and non-reactive to touch. Our vet has said that too many people do their dogs a disservice by not getting into these habits from the very beginning, when, if possible, i.e. It's understood that if you rescue a dog, you may not be able to do this. Ours just said she was weird because she didn't like her feet touched but was okay with him looking at her teeth. We've always touched her all over though and she just doesn't like the feet's touched. My lab is afraid of her nails being cut because of the vet's office. When we took her as a puppy the vet tech trimmed her nail too far and I guess it hurt quite a bit because she yelped. Ever since then she shakes when her nails get trimmed. Good weight, clean coat, brings in for regular vaccine, even if it's an indoor pet or, doesn't leave the house, nails aren't too long, can answer basic questions about patient's history, eating normal. Attitude normal? Drinking okay? Peeing, pooping okay? Brings in for annual exams, has all puppies vaccines by age 1 at least, pets need vaccines every 1 to 3 years. Spayed and or neutered if it's a mutt and the pet isn't intended to be breed by a breeder who is knowledgeable. Doesn't come in concerned about their pet and wants to know what's wrong but refuses to do any diagnostics. Well socialized, owners correct bad behavior. Vet tech. Not a vet but taxidermist here. Got to work on quite a few pets already and I can tell how well they were treated by their smell and all over skin condition. If you feed your pet garbage I will know, they will stink terribly even when fresh, recently deceased, once worked on four rats from a very passionate owner who had lots of them. Just skinning them was unbearable, so pungent was the smell. Mites, rashes, at least one broken and crooked healed up bone. I have rats and that makes me sad. They share a leash. Noah, get the boat. We took our old lab to be put to sleep, cancer sucks. She sat happily on the towel on the floor at the vets and the nurse shaved her paw while we feed her milk bones. She had half of one off the nurse then the vet injected her. Nellie laid down and closed her eyes, all peaceful. Then jumped up, nicked the other half of the bone off the nurse and ate it. Then lay down again and fell asleep. We were all laughing and crying. Typical Nellie. My vet said she could tell that we talk to our cat cuz he's very talkative. Both of our cats are chatterboxes. Vet assistant here. Good owners usually do the following. Pay for recommend tests and meds when the pet is sick. Have a well-groomed and clean Yorkie, Shih Tzu, Cocker Spaniel, ECT stay up to date on preventative care, like vaccines and flea and heartworm prevention. Follow the doctor's diet advice, not feeding grain-free, uneducated raw diets, or shit kibble. Stay with their pet when it is euthanized. No animal should die without their beloved owner around. My parents made me bring our family dog to the vet since they couldn't handle being there to put him down. I am pretty sure I was 17 and my dog had been with me since age 4. This dog was my best friend long before anyone ever was. He went everywhere with me. Growing up if I left my house he ran alongside of my bike. I am now 35 I still think about it. Back then I felt it was so messed up that I had to be the one to bring him and stay there. I legit was mad at them for making me have to be there. It messed me up for a while. I still get checked up sometimes when I go by that vet. But looking back now it was the best for him that I was with him. Is a grain-free diet bad? Or would that be a recommendation based on specific pet needs? Until I read the comments I thought this was asking vegetarians of Reddit and I was really confused. Don't worry, I read, veterans, and wondered why they got to weigh in on my pet. Not a vet, but related story. Two months ago my cat Eddie got run over. 
Eddie is literally like dog in cat's body, he welcomes me, isn't moody at all, just climbs on my lap and purrs his heart out, literally the goofiest cat ever etc., so of course I was scared af. We, me and my mom, drove him to the vet, they began the whole temperature thing, then tried to take his blood, and every time they tried he just run towards me and buried his head in my coat, I hate needles, so the feeling was mutual, while still having broken ribs and one leg. The veterinarian just smiled and said she'd never seen such a connection between cat and human, she said owner, but I hate that expression. Made me cry and cured my kitty boy, so I'm grateful. I'm not a veterinarian, but a caretaker and we have dogs come in all the time with their toenails curling over into their paw pads and mats all up in their fur. If a pet seems to be well kept it's usually a good sign. Not a vet but in my country the average bunny lives 3 to 6 years. Mine lived 10. In less than a week it will be exactly 1 year since her death, it was tough. Had her since I was 5. Damn she was cute. The vet was shocked to see her at her last day, never seen a bunny that lived that long and he's a professional for years. They take your advice over Google they ask about when should they see a vet again they know their habits they prepare for unforeseen events or try to. They treat them like a member of their family. I'm a surgeon for both small animals and people, but if the pet has a good vibe and the owner stays in the room, talks to the pet, ECT, it's a good sign. Like PPL who don't care, usually leave the room and just ask, how much is the bill? It blows my mind that there are people like that. It's never even crossed my mind that you would leave your pet alone in the room, that must be so upsetting for the pet. My husband never loses his temper with our doggos and always has patience to rear them the correct way. He never has that patience for human beings lol. Not a vet but common sense they don't make their carnivorous pet a vegan. Funny story actually, one time, my dog really wanted what I was eating, a carrot, so I gave her a bite. She held it in her mouth for like 5 minutes before spitting it out. She then went back to begging, so I picked up the piece I had already given her, and gave it back to her. Same thing happens two or three more times until she actually eats it. And now, well now she loves carrots and it is really weird. That being said, she is very much not vegan. This sounds like minimum possible effort rather than good. They listen to you, instead of trying to convince you that what they read on Google is true they can answer all your questions about what the pet eats, where it sleeps, what it does during the day they don't try to humanize their pet by treating it like a baby. They understand first and foremost that it's a dog, cat, not a person. And GT, they don't try to humanize their pet by treating it like a baby. They understand first and foremost that it's a dog, cat, not a person till I am a bad dog owner crying face. They are genuinely happy. A good example of this would be Jenna Marbles. She cares for her pets like they are her kids. She gets a lot of flack but she's the best with her dogs. The video of her teaching her scared adopted greyhound that baths are safe and calm is a perfect example. It's so sweet and you can clearly see how much her pups trust and respect her. Vet tech here. My answer is. The basic preventative care. Microchip, neutered, flea prevention and dental cleaning. I also work in a shelter. So many intact dogs with no form of ID. What's the point of putting a collar on your dog if it doesn't have tags? Big whoop, this dog has an owner but who? Amazon sells dog tags for as low as $4. Paired with $1 collar form 99 cent store and you're good. If you don't like clinky tags, there are slider tags that go on the collar so no noise, pet hates things around their neck, get your pet microchipped. Low cost clinics sometimes do microchipping for $20. Don't eat fast food for a week or two and get that done. After seeing the prevalent irresponsible owners, it's hard to feel bad for you when you don't take the preventative steps to have your pet come back to you if it gets lost. It's as cheap as $5. Big bonus points if pet has both form of ID since some people don't think to check microchips when they find a dog. 
and neuter your dogs. From my experience, fixed animal owners are much more aware and caring for their pet versus the intact owner who is indifferent about what happens or they prefer macho-ness over their pet's health. And flea prevention, owners that are aware of what those little bloodsucking monsters can do and willing to take measure to keep their fur friend pest free. Did you know, most skin issues on dogs, cats are flea related. By having your pet on a reliable monthly flea prevention, it'll help reduce skin issues. And dental cleaning. You brush your teeth twice a day, I should hope, why not your pet? So many people are surprised their pet is friendlier, happier after dentals and think it's just from being woozy but a few weeks later, your pet is still happy? I would be cranky if I had chronic toothaches and totally outgoing after the pain is gone. Current vaccines also good. Puppy shots that expired 5 years ago are useless at this point. Not exactly good pet owner in terms of pet care but owners who bring office staff food, snacks as a thank you. M. Yees. Had a client that brought us lunch food, burritos, sandwiches, every day her dog was hospitalized. I definitely spent my lunch time petting and comforting her pet and giving it that extra TLC instead of driving out to get food during my hour break. We waivered her exam fees and reduced the hospitalization cost on the down low so the cost of food was pretty much even. An extra $20 minus 40 for donuts or burgers and we go the extra mile and we're more likely to remember you, your pet on future visits.